This is when the rubber meets the road, because if Howard Schultz is president, there's no doubt, I mean, he would align with Republicans, and he would probably be able to chip off, although it would be increasingly hard, but there's certainly still a lot of terrible Democrats, and he would make a play to destroy Medicare and Social Security, and that may or may not work, and then he might do a couple, you know, maybe he would do like a presidential proclamation saying slavery was bad or something, as, a, as an example of how he's, he's in the center. And then pretty much besides that, basically absolutely nothing would get done except for actually probably the same types of executive orders and regulatory rollback that any Republican president would do. Uh, So here's Howard Schultz's. This idea of what he would do about the Supreme Court (laughs) is an idea that anybody who has been reading the top lines of The New York Times for the last five years would be like, oh, that's a dumb idea. I would not nominate a Supreme Court justice unless he or she could be confirmed by two-thirds, two-thirds of the United States Senate. The courts have become yet another battlefield in the ongoing war between Democratic and Republican leaders. That's not how our democracy should work. These battles have undermined our faith in the rule of law, in the impartiality of the entire judicial system. And all of this has to change. (laughs) You are a (laughs) douchebag. I don't have anything else on that. I think it's just, it's it's so (laughs) fascinating to me that his whole project here is that I'm going to garner just enough of the popular vote and electoral college to be elected president. Then... When I appoint someone to the Supreme Court, I'm going to get two thirds of the elected officials in the Senate to support him. The math is just insane. And it's so weird. Like the further this goes on, the more apparent it's going to be that this is like a make a wish thing for a billionaire. Totally. That we can just like, oh, yeah, he can go be president, run for president. Howard, you, you got it, buddy. That's an it. That's an interesting idea. And like have these people just pat him on the back the whole time because they want his money. Right. And then and then and it's also like I'm the one I've said, look, I think in general, the left needs to be in a better relationship to the needs that are served by things like self-help thinking. And I do think generically like, you know what, actually positive psychology. Yes, there's a huge downside to it. I know. Don't please don't get pedantic with me. But the truth of the matter is like in people's lives, having things like goals and, and meditating and exercising and you know, mapping your life. Like these things can be super valuable. And what's, but what's so interesting is like, as you scale it, like magical thinking might be helpful when you're trying to sell people overly sugary coffee drinks. Uh, And certainly in politics, you need to set vision, but like, this is just pure magical thinking applied to a realm where it's like, I mean, you had a president like Obama in a deep, in a t- in a different historical moment who's just better than Howard Schultz in every conceivable metric. He's infinitely more intelligent. He, you know, was ready to be president. He has a keen understanding of law and history and policy. You know, every way Barack Obama is better. And even he, one of his fatal flaws was the delusion that he could that the Congress and American politics was like a Harvard Law Review debate and not a brutal material conflict, mostly populated by profoundly racist people or just unlimitedly cynical people on the other side who, even though he was pursuing a centrist to center right agenda, would do everything they could to destroy him. Favor's going to break. Right. So the brilliant Barack Obama. I mean, this is the thing that's amazing about this what we have right now, we have Beto O'Rourke. I'm going to copy Barack Obama completely, except I'm actually just like a rich white kid who has no, there's nothing unique or interesting or overcoming about my story. And I don't represent any type of historical breakthrough, but I do a good impersonation of him. And then we have the oligarch who's like, I'm literally like, we talk about the, I mean, I don't know, but Howard Schultz might have actually had the staff of the West Wing make a private movie with him that only he and his friends watch in his private screening room. This guy is like, this is some like, 
you know, this is uh, this is almost like the uh, Tracy Jordan character on Thirty Rock. I mean, he he has a group of enablers <laughs> that are acting out his fantasy life for him, and we all got to listen to it. <laughs> Man, I that's almost reason enough for me to actually watch Thirty Rock to try Just to the, piece together <laughs> Tracy Morgan, Howard Schultz. I mean, Tracy Morgan's way cooler than Howard Schultz. Or Tracy Jordan, Tracy that's the Jordan, character, right? or the Tracy Jordan character. But it reminds me, there's one where like he wants to go to space. <laughs> so they're like, all right, we got to fake a moon launch. That's Howard. That's Howard Schultz. And I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm just not impressed by somebody who discovers that coffee is a saleable commodity. Like this has been happening since like the 1650s, folks. It's not like he's like, oh, look at this guy. He figured out a way to like sell sand for thousands of dollars. Like, no, it's This coffee. isn't George Washington Carver. This is he didn't the, discover the peanut or the, whatever the hell. Like he didn't, he didn't break, he didn't, this isn't, this isn't like, you know, this isn't the guy who designed the Toyota Prius. This I, is I, one I of the most yeah. established business models in the world, in world history. Right, and also, I'm, and I am sure, without knowing much, that the breakthrough in the business models was like, let's make a bunch of disgusting mass market drinks that are like have more calories, it's salt, sugar, fat. Yeah, yeah, that have more calories than a than a burger. And what we'll do is we'll ruthlessly exploit a supply chain overseas, and then we'll <laughs> undercut mom and pop coffee shops. Genius. There you go. There's Starbucks. What a genius. What, By the way, what, let's risk of the imagination of a new imagination or whatever all, the fuck. All the time being subsidized by the lack of public spaces in uh, cities. Right, because libraries are closed and because there aren't nice parks, you go and huddle in these like dingy, depressing hellholes. <laughs> <laughs> where, you, where it actually literally is a chore to just say, can I just get a... You know what? I'll meet you halfway. Forget just even a cup of coffee. Can I just have a latte? And can I call it a latte? And can it be small instead of a tall? Whatever the fuck. Right, other now we're getting of, into you know. Dennis Leary territory here. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm becoming character myself. But still, like, Jesus Christ, get the fuck out of here. But keep running. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep you're speaking. Ma- you know, it's very funny to watch, to think about Bloomberg. Because Bloomberg... Again, no one hates Bloomberg more than me, but like you wouldn't, you could watch any number of speeches and think, wow, what an authoritarian, egotistical asshole. But you never would watch, and, and of course, delusional just because of his money and disconnect from reality, but you would never watch a Bloomberg speech and just go, wow, what a moron. <laughs> like you watch Howard Schultz, you're like, dude, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. 